Hi, welcome to the Tournament Center. I'm Zach Hill, and I'm here with Brian Kibler, the Dragon Master. <laughs> and we are going to take a look at his red-green aggressive deck, we're just calling Gruel Aggro. Now, uh, if we can take a look at some of the cards uh, up there, uh, we're going to start, I guess, with some of the big beasties. Now, yeah, we've called this an aggressive deck, but we've got a lot of four and five drops here. Four copies of Gore Clan Rampager, four copies of Hellrider, four copies Boom. of Big Dad, the dragon, <laughs> the dragon Thunderball exactly. Hellkite. Don't leave home without it. Now, that's a lot of baddies. <laughs> Why did you decide to play these in this deck? Uh, well, one of the things about Standard right now is that, that there's a lot of cards, especially in, in you know, decks like Jund and Blue at Red, which I expect to be the most popular decks in the field, right. um, that can really punish just small creatures. Uh, there's you know, Huntmaster of the Fells, Olivia, Thragtusk. It's very difficult to fight through these with just small creatures, so right. you want to be able to go big. And in fact, you're not actually playing your own Huntmasters. Right. No, why, why, why is Hellrider a better choice than that? Slot? You want to do damage. Uh, you know, if you're if you're playing against a deck like Jund, you don't really have time to you know play a Huntmaster and try and beat them with that. Their deck is full of stuff like their own Huntmasters and Thrag Tusks and Bonfires. That you know playing a, a four drop that doesn't doesn't attack them the turn it comes into play and doesn't really you know do all that much to forward your your position toward actually killing them. Uh, it's just not worth it. You'd, you'd much rather be more aggressive with something like Hellrider. Totally. You know, speaking of being aggressive, let's actually take a look at some of the cards that support all these fatties in this deck. Now, you're not just throwing a bunch of four and five mana creatures oh in no. there. You've kind of <laughs> got to do something before that. Yes. Uh, now, uh, I see Arbor Elf, Elvish Mystic, four copies of Arbor Elf, only two of Mystic. How mm -hmm. did we get to that combination? I actually started with four of each. Uh, uh -huh. Elvish Mystic was one of the cards in M14 that was most exciting to me. Mm. Uh, I have long loved the Lenore Elf. <laughs> and uh, you know, having only Arbor Elf as an accelerator in a green red deck uh, makes it di really difficult to actually get to you know, your big creatures frequently. Um, and Elvish Mystic you know, provides you with an acceleration, especially to this fellow, Domri. Yeah. And being able to play a Domri on turn two against a lot of controlling or sort of mid range, mid -range control type decks like Jun is just incredibly powerful. And one of the things you were saying to me is a sacrifice you have to make to play this deck, unlike something like Naya's, you don't have Boros <laughs> Reckoner, you don't have Loxen Smiter. Why is Domri worth it? What makes this guy so good? Domri, Domri is just incredibly powerful. <laughs> the, uh, the plus one ability on Domri uh, in a deck that has as many creatures as this one basically draws you half a card each turn. Uh, you know, I, I have, I think, 29 creatures in the deck, so every time you plus one Domri, you have about a 50% chance to draw a card. Totally. And uh, the, the fight ability on Domri is super, super powerful because uh, a lot of times a deck like this will really want ways that it can break through uh, a stalled board situation. Say your opponent plays, say your opponent does play a, a, you know, a Huntmaster. You want to be able to kill that Huntmaster, but you don't want your deck to be clogged up with a bunch of removal spells. So Domri gives you the ability to just fight that Huntmaster and get it off the board and keep attacking. Right, and if it, maybe you know if you don't want to play a removal spell now, but you want to a couple turns from right. now, he just sits on the board and, and threatens. The that. ultimate on Domri is basically you win the game. I, I, yeah. I've literally never lost a game where I've ultimated <laughs> Domri, including games where I never again drew a creature. <laughs> um, you, the you know, double strike, trample, hexproof haste—that's a huge, huge threat, particularly against decks like Blue White Red that are, uh, are ill-positioned to actually be able to, to deal damage to kill Domri. So if you play an early Domri against them, they have to play so strangely to be able to just you know, right. keep it from ultimating that you're frequently able to just kill them with your creatures. Right, they're having to like throw burn at that instead right. of your creatures and things of that nature. When, they're, when their turn four has to be War Leader's Helix or Domri, <laughs> they're probably in trouble. <laughs> That makes sense. Okay, so one thing that we're seeing, though, we, ha we have Arbor Elf and Elvish Mystic, but we actually have a lot of two drops mm -hmm. in this deck. If we can take a look at those. We've got, uh, okay, well, these are <laughs> not those guys. guys. <laughs> uh, let's, let's try again. Flip a coin, and where does it get us? Any two drops? Okay. Oh, well, no, uh, we have busy motors. We now. have busy motors. Oh, well, that's technically a two drop. <laughs> it does cost right. two. Pretty good. So, so what we're not seeing right here is, of course, uh, Strangle Root Geist, mm -hmm. Flint Oath Boar, and uh, the scavenging. big daddy from M14, yes. Scavenging Ooze, was a legacy staple before he showed up in Standard. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, when people are playing you know, a lot of Lana War Elf type cards, they're trying to power into three drops. Your deck has 11 two-mana creatures. Why yes. are these guys so good? Uh, well, you really want to be able to, like I said, get in the board and start attacking your opponent quickly. Okay. Uh, and scaven Scavenging Ooze is a, a hugely powerful threat in sort of the mid-game, so being able to have a creature that you're able to sink mana into from stuff like Arbor Elf or Elvish Mystic, later on, you can still make use of that mana. Totally. Um, and even Flint of Four, Flint of Four is kind of a three drop. Because if you play uh, a, uh, an Arbor Elf or Elvish Mystic uh, on the first turn, go. here we go. Here we go. Because my fellows. Yeah, <laughs> you, play, uh, you hang out with the pigs. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, uh, you bore them to death. Get it? <laughs>
No, I no. see what you okay. did. I'm not <laughs> Luis Bryant. You can't get away with that. Okay. So you, you know, okay. you play your, you play your, your, uh, your elf or uh, well, elf or elf, right. and you, you can get in with Flint of Four immediately. Um, right. And plus, the, the the elves actually provide bodies for Hellrider triggers later in the game. So you know, you actually have a lot of uses out of those mana creatures, even though you don't really have much at the three slot in terms of actual creatures. Right. For a while, when I was building, I was working on this deck, I had. Uh, I had Wolfier Avengers, oh, okay. and they were pretty solid, but they just weren't aggressive enough. I just wanted to be able to actually have creatures that were, you know, putting much more pressure on my opponent immediately when they came down, and I ended up switching to Hellrider. Awesome. Okay, so and the, here's where we see him. We and see we Hellrider, go. we see Gore Clamor, we see Hellkite. I want to talk about the removal spell you used. You actually only played one spell that kills stuff. We can take a look at that. Now, you, you had a lot of options available to you. You could have played Pillar of Flame, mm -hmm. you could have played Searing Spear, you could have played Flames of the Firebrand. Instead, you settled on three copies of Mizium Mortars. Why, why does this get the nod? I actually originally had four copies of Bonfire the Damn in the deck okay. when I was originally playing it. Um, and it was, you know, obviously very powerful against black-white decks, things like Lingering Souls deck, huh, and, and as, as well as you know, green decks that have a bunch of mana creatures of their own. Mm. It was just too bad against Jund and against Blue-White Red. Uh, I wanted a removal spell that could punch me through things like Olivia. You know, Olivia, right. if it comes down early, is a huge, huge problem. Yeah. Uh, because you know, none of your creatures effectively fight with it. Uh, with Domery, you know, when they can get, it, if they can play it, turn three off a of Farseek. Plus, Mizium Mortars can just be an incredibly powerful card to sweep your opponent's board in the late game. Right. You've uh, still got all those mana creatures right. that can power up Overload if yeah, the game and, gets and, to that. Yeah. And you know, Arbor Elf untapping Stomping Ground can give you right. the red mana to actually Overload it. Uh, there's also the fact that, as you, as you said earlier, you know, my three drops aren't that good. They don't fight very well. Uh, well, I don't have any three drops, really, <laughs> but my creatures don't fight very well with stuff sure. like Locks it on Smiter. Right. And Mizzium Mortar is at four damage is perfect to get a Locks it on Smiter off the board. Cool. Okay, so let's actually take a look at uh, the mana base really quickly. Uh, you know, obviously you're playing your dual lands. Nine for six mountains, obviously getting a mountain for Flint of Boar is super important. Mm -hmm. I actually want to take a look at the next land because to me that's the uh, one of the most interesting things about this list. You've actually oh. only got one <laughs> copy of Kessig Wolf right mm -hmm. now. Clearly a deck with mana creatures, a lot of early drops, would like a way to power through the top. Why are we only playing one of these? Uh, I actually had two uh, mm -hmm. until very late in the process. Uh, when I actually added the Hellriders, I decided I needed to up my red mana count. Sure. Uh, for a while, I actually had Borderland Ranger in the deck, mm. which enabled me to play an additional copy of Kessig Wolfrun, but Borderland Ranger was just too low impact. <laughs> you draw Borderland Ranger late in the game, it doesn't really do yeah, anything. exactly. And even, even if you draw Borderland Ranger to play, you know, on turn two off of an elf or turn three, it just, it just doesn't exchange profitably with so much of what your opponent can have on the board at that point. Right. That I decided it was, it was worth having just generally better cards in my deck, mm. uh, and sacrificing the one extra Kessig Wolfrun by playing the extra mountain. Sure. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at the sideboard, actually. The first card I want to look at is something you said was the reason you wanted to play it. <laughs> yeah, you've been all tingly, I can see it right now. Tell me about Burning Earth. Why is this card so powerful? Why would a sideboard card make you want to play a deck? Burning Earth is Mana Barb's U. Um, <laughs> Mana Barb is a powerful card to begin with. Right, and seen tons of play. You know, Mana Barb's has been a, a aggressive deck sideboard staple for you know mm. however long it's been available in standard. And Burning Earth now, uh, I, when I when I first you know first playing this deck, I was doing pretty well. We we're playing you know right. just pretty much just playing game ones, and you know was 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 play, going pretty even against you know Blood Red and Jun. Then I'm like, let's try sideboarding, and I won nine of the next ten games, most of which involved Burning Earth. Oh my goodness! And it just being completely unbeatable. Uh, you know, so many of the decks in standard that people are playing right now have an incredibly low to no basic land count, mm. and being able to resolve a Burning Earth against them, particularly the the decks like Blue White Red that are incredibly mana hungry. You know, you, they, right. they want to use their mana for stuff like Sphinx's Revelation, Snapcaster for Sphinx's Revelation. And well, that, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> so. Cool, okay, so we've got Burning Earth, really important sideboard card. If we can actually look at some of the rest of the sideboard. The removal. You've got, so, you got some removal. Now we saw Mizium Mortars in the main deck. Of mm -hmm. course, that doesn't mean it's the only good removal spell in standard. What are each one of these really quickly actually good against? So you really want to have, I like having a diversity of removal. Okay. Uh, a card like, for instance, Pillow of Flame is really good against a, you know aggressive deck that you want to be able to kill their one drop or their two drop. Mm. Whereas a card like Bonfire is very good when you're playing against a deck like Black White Humans or sure. Aristocrat type decks that have stuff like Lingering Souls that you want to be able to wipe the board from. Uh, similarly, Flames of the Firebrand is kind of in between. Flames of the Firebrand is very good against uh, those decks that have stuff like Blood Artist and Lingering Souls. Uh, where you, you don't necessarily want Pillar of Flame, but it's also a card that you can bring in because it's cheap enough to kill right. the quick creatures out of, like, say, a red deck or, you know, aggressive white deck. Totally. Now, so for bigger creatures, we've actually got some different cards to be oh, able yeah. to deal with those. <laughs> uh, yeah, you were excited about one of these. If we can take a look at those right now. We've got, uh, 
You've got zealous conscripts, which we've seen before, and gruel war chant, yes. <laughs> which is uh, busting out some limited technology, oh, yeah. along with the singleton volcanic strength, also kind of a card that you're used to seeing out of limited sideboards. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if the burn spells are for like killing smaller creature decks, black, white tokens, etc., what are you doing with these guys? These are for killing players. <laughs> <laughs> Player removal, exactly. and often well, forgot about. One of the things, when, uh, when we were testing uh, a bunch against Jun, okay. one of the cards that was giving me a lot of trouble was Lifebane Zombie. Sure. And a big part of the reason that Lifebane Zombie was giving me trouble was not just because it would come down and take a creature from right. my hand, but it would then be able to block my creatures and trade with them. Because right. most of my creatures, you know, are like things like, like Flint of Four or Scavenging Ooze before it gets big, they just get eaten, you know, they just trade by, with, a, with a Lifebane Zombie. Uh, uh, between that and Thrag Tusk, just being able right. to you know make a big body that's tough to get through, totally. uh, I, I decided that I wanted I wanted ways to just punch through the situation. And if you know my opponent plays a Life Bane Zombie and I play a Gruel War Chant, they're never they're never getting value off that Life Bane Zombie. It's right. got to block with something else. And you know if my opponent plays a Thrag Tusk and I already have a Gruel War Chant in play and I play a Zealous Conscripts, they are dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is so many damage. Yeah, they, they just, you know, the, the combination in particular of Conscripts and Warchant makes it so hard for someone to actually mount a defense with creatures. Right. Because Gruel Warchant is making it so, you know, they can't block with just one guy, and then you just Conscript it and kill them. Totally. And then finally, just Volcanic Strength, uh, you know, is that more for just same old I, I think that the toughest matchup that I'm looking at is really Naya, and sure. I just want to be able to have another way to sort of get past Reckoner and, uh, and Smiter. Cool. Just another way to punch through winning mid-range fights exactly. as you are known to exactly. do. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Brian. This is Brian Kibler. I'm Zach Hill here at the Tournament Center. Let's take a look at some more magic.